We love tube clocks. The Electronica 7 Soviet clock. This one qualifies. As you can see, it's got lots of tubes. Vacuum fluorescent display. Dot matrix makes up your digit. CMOS driven. All those cathodes are tied together. It's unique how they do that. Made in 1989. Nice heavy gauge rear covers. I have this uh, all apart at the moment because of one tube didn't make the trip over to the water over here. We're on the uh, east coast of the USA. There's your clock board in there. All discrete ICs. Quartz crystal time base. So it'll actually keep time. Um, it's not referenced off the AC line. Here it's 60 hertz. Um, I have quite a few clocks that reference off the uh, mains voltage. This is not the case, so this will keep its own time fine. 220 volt transformer. Um, this one may be able to be rewired so we can run it on uh, 110. Um, currently, I have it running for a step up transformer, which actually runs this clock right at 220, which is what it's designed for. Um, Nowadays, they run the uh, service a little hotter, and that stresses the uh, components of the clock a little bit. So I think I might just leave it running and up this transformer because it's uh, it's going to be a happy voltage. Uh, the tubes will last longer, and won't have to rework the filament circuit to try and calm it down. Uh, you run the filament circuit a little hotter as a result of uh, the mains voltage being a little higher things wear out a little quicker and the tubes start get dark spots and stuff quicker so I may have to uh, refresh the filter capacitor take that apart figure out what's in there and it does look like it has battery backup to me I guess it's D cells We have set functions, hours and minutes set, and the other one seems to zero out the minutes. And I'm not really sure what the uh, function of the plug is. Maybe somebody can chime in on that. So I have to go in and trim the leads off, but that's the tube I replaced. There's 25 volts DC on the capacitor, and I'm assuming this is a rectifier. It measures out 20 volts AC, caddy corner, and 25 volts DC, the opposite caddy corner. On the timekeeping board, 
that appears to be Zener. I measure 10 volts across that. So I guess uh, possibly um, deduct 10 off of 25, the supply, end up with 15, which is about right for CMOS. I'm assuming I uh, didn't map out the circuit or measure across the power pins on an IC or anything, but uh, just a note of interest. I'm not quite sure how the windings on the transformer are laid out yet, um, but uh, obviously 20 volts out to the rectifier, then to the capacitor, which provides a 25 volt supply for the tube. And you also need a filament circuit, and the tubes, I believe, run at 3.15, thereabouts, plus or minus. Um, that should be most of the supplies. And from the back side, it's a little dark. We have a transistor for each tube. There's seven of them stacked, so each board provides a transistor. I'm not sure how the switching arrangement is. There's no grids in these tubes, so I'm not sure if they're switching the filament or if there's any multiplexing of any sort going on. Typically, uh, if there's multiplexing, there's grids and VFD tubes that would be switched on and off to control the tube. Not the case here. Now these VFD tubes do wear out over the years. Um, they have filament running right down the center of all the dots that starts the electrons. And the dot glows with the phosphor that's laid on it. And you can see the center of the dots start getting dimmer over time. Um, not all of them are like that. Uh, some still look pretty good. But here's an example of how they start to uh, degrade or actually wear out, not really degrade. Your useful life comes to a slow end. But you can see how the filament creates a hot spot initially when they're new and then uh, becomes burned in over time. And then you replace the tubes to get a nice new look again. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is an IV-17 or an IV-4 tube. I'll have to look up the dimensions. But the multi-segment VFD tube looks like this was used here for a colon separator. Let's remove the front glass plate. The side has to come off. In order to get the side off, you just remove these two screws or back them out some. And that secures the outer board to the inner board. And the inner board is what's holding the case together. So you just slide the outer board out a little bit and then it opens up the track. Allows you to slide the glass out. The other side is fixed in place. This is the front panel out of the clock. Electronica 7, I guess that's how you say that. Green tinted glass. And on the back side, it was probably masked off and painted black. Here you can see where a little black is rubbed off, so I'll have to do some touch up. At least I still have the straight line, I won't have to mask it. I'll touch that up before reassembly. And the gra glass is just scribed and snapped. You still have the remnants of just a rough break. So 
So the display tubes used in this are the IV26 Type 2. Um, the two left dots are connected together, the three center dots are connected together, and the two right dots are connected together internally. Um, the Type 1 IV26 has individual pinouts for all the dots. The Type 3, I'm not sure where that fits in, but again, in this Electronic 7 IV26 Type 2 tubes are used. The battery backup is just that, it's backup. Uh, it's not going to run the clock illuminated as far as I would assume. Being 369 volts. I'm pretty sure that's just going to keep the um, quartz crystal time base going to keep time. And then when power is restored, the tubes will light up and it just basically take off from where it was. Alright, I'm going to do some modifications. Um, as you've probably seen, if you're familiar with these clocks, by now these things really toast out the tubes um, with a lot of hours on them. So, in getting this up and running here, where I'm at in the U.S., um, like I said, I'm running it through a uh, step-up transformer, and my supply to this clock is basically right at 220, which is what this clock's designed for. But even with that, I'm seeing voltages to the filaments. Um, these IV26 filaments, um, I think, are spec'd at uh, 3.15 volts at 80 milliamps. Um, the supply from the transformer was running it a bit higher. So we're, I think what I found is three and a third and a little higher. So um, I wanted to soften the blow to the filament which may extend the life of the tubes. So what I did there is I just got a standoff and from the filament supply on the transformer we're live here, I'm not going to touch anything you have to figure out which ones you're at um, According to schematic, it was the second one over, but in my case here, they must have wired it a little different. Um, filament was on the end here, and I just put a group of resistors in series here. Um, I was trying to achieve about 0.1 ohms to 0.15 ohms, and that that uh, eats up about one third of a volt so the uh, filaments are just under 0.3 volts now which uh, makes me feel better um, so that'll help give the tube some longer life so this is another angle the um, resistors that I got stacked up it's gonna be temporary I'll probably get a um, better resistor but um, you got almost three amps of filament current in this clock all together um, so depending on how much voltage you're dropping do the math get your power calculation so you're going to need better than a watt of um, resistor and then your margin so right now these are going to be working kind of hard but there's eight of them or so in there half watt a piece It'll work for now until I get something better put in there. Um, and then the other modification is I want to do brightness control. And by uh, what we want to do there, I'll stumble in here, the filament circuit is referenced to common ground at the capacitor, okay? So, in my case, you just put a voltmeter on, just determine which one's plus and minus. My bottom one here is minus. And you got to figure out which is the supply from the filament winding. So you'll see, you break those three wires off that capacitor lug. 
and then you got to determine which one goes to the filaments on the boards um, the upper and lower is filament in and out okay when you're ohm in and out you don't see much difference because everything's in parallel it's it's basically a dead short so but at any rate you want to supply the filament power directly to the filaments but lifting this off the negative lug on a capacitor and inserting a resistance between okay and that's what I have with these two <clears throat> test hooks all right uh, through a set of leads up to a resistance substitution box all right and what, what you're doing now is your ground reference is going to be able you're going to be able to change your ground reference um, the filaments start the electron flow and you have to reference it to ground because it's its own winding it's AC and by changing the reference to ground you're going to change the how the electrons react in the tube and like the phosphor so um, in a nutshell best I can figure out that's how it works so I'm at about 47 ohms here and closest I can get to zero is 15 ohms all right and you just dial this down it's hard to see on the camera but it does does dim it quite a bit okay so you can put in a variable resistor or I think what I'm going to do for now I don't want to drill any holes in a cabinet I'm going to do a fixed resistance and then get this thing hanging up on a wall I'm going to probably settle in between 33 and 47 ohms somewhere in there and um, that's what I'm doing There we have it back together other than a few new bright tubes on the left side actually a couple and maybe one or two little slightly dim ones it's looking good and we'll go up on the wall hope you enjoyed have a good day